Hey, what is going on guys? Mike Iacona here, Mike's Custom Airbrush, Iacona Studios. And today I wanna to talk about um, real fire and a couple techniques I, use, I like to use when doing this. Um, a lot of times I see real fire being attempted and a lot of people are really relying on their stencil to do most of the leg work. Um, and the problem is with that is it looks very stencilized. I am not, I, I, I'm a big promoter in freehand airbrushing, but right tool for the right job and stencils are a requirement to get a certain look. So it definitely is one of these requirements because you want a hard edge here and there, but the trick is people tend to overuse these. So um, I'm doing a quick tailgate here, um, just some lettering in the back with a little real fire and I thought it would be a good time to show you how I try to balance that. So um, real quick, first thing I usually do is I kind of map out where I want my fire to go a little bit and I'll kind of just come in and I'll freehand some real loose, um, soft, you know, um, trickles here and there just to show where I want to map things out. And then a lot of times that's when I'll take my um, freehand tool and as you see here, I kind of came along got that hard edge and did it a few areas now this is the trick where a lot of people get lost and they just keep working this and without the freehand airbrush to tie it in it might look like leaves it might look like a variety of things but it doesn't really come off as real fire so um, my advice would be to take some reference shots um, whether you lit a campfire and you took some still shots and, and really watch how fire dances around, you'll see some hard edges, you'll see some soft stuff, but um, I think that'll help also too. But usually I'll map a couple things around like this and this technique I really call bridging. It's nothing new, but basically I'll lay those things out and then I'm gonna come in with my freehand airbrush and I'm gonna kind of connect these so it starts becoming a flame versus just individual you know, marks um, or paint areas. So um, I'll do a couple strokes and you'll see how I'll just start to tie these in, so. And I'm being still real loose with this. It's a layering process, but still, you know, if I don't like something, I could always knock it back with my candy and go over it. You're doing that with layers anyway with real fire, but sometimes it's just a one or two colors, so you really want to be precise with your flames, um, and you want to have good connection. So you definitely want to try to add depth with some ins and outs, but just right here. I didn't go too crazy, and obviously I'll tighten stuff up, but... You'll see how I kind of just automatically connected these guys. And then I can keep building off there. So... The combination of the hard edge and the freehand airbrush helps connect that. So I'll go a little bit more in depth and then I'll highlight these things, but bridging guys, um, don't just rely on your freehand stencils um, to do all your work. I'm not a big stencil person to begin with, so I don't think you should re be relying on these. I, should, I think you should be using these um, to enhance your art or add certain effects, but don't use them as a crutch. I'm an old school guy, so like, learn to freehand draw your shit, straight up. Um, you'll notice a lot of people when they just constantly use stencils, and that's fine when you're a beginner because it's kind of like training wheels, but get off it. Just suck out, out the bat, and you'll get better um, with all your artwork, but um, today was a good, good little tip I wanted to share with you while I was beginning this um, commission piece, um, and it's about bridging. So yeah, guys, you saw how I had some freehand um, little spots there and then I came in and I'll layer that, you know, knock it back red, candy red, uh, maybe do another layer and another layer. Um, and yeah, guys, so don't rely on your stencils. Freehand draw your stuff, guys, um, and you'll get better.
till next time.